Hi, everyone. This is Vera Kichanova from Free Cities Foundation. We are a dedicated team of professionals working together to support innovation in governance and boost human freedom and prosperity around the world. Today, I am very excited to host Massimo Mazzone, a lifelong believer in stateless societies and the founder of Morasan, a charter city in Honduras. On top of that, Massimo is also the president of Centro American Consulting and Capital, a conglomerate with $1 billion of yearly sales and 5,000 employees. Its most important division is the largest pharmacy chain in the region, but arguably the most exciting is the city of Morrison. Before we start, let me remind you that very soon, many of us, including Massimo, will gather in Prague for an exciting event a three-day conference titled Liberty in Our Lifetime. The global free cities community will come together to share our experiences in creating enclaves of freedom and prosperity and brainstorm strategies for the future. We have an impressive list of speakers from Brazil to Senegal to Serbia, covering such diverse topics as cisteading, crypto, urban growth in Africa, the future in education, and many more. Check the full program at Liberty lifetimeliberty.com. Massimo, thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. Uh, first, I have uh, quite a personal question about your background. So you were born in Italy. How did you end up in Honduras? Well, I grew up in the Boston Consulting Group, a consulting company, and I went to Mexico when uh, uh, the firm decided to open the offices and there I got involved uh, with uh, the dot-com uh, bust uh, so at the end I, I went to in a startup but then I lost the job uh, and I end up in Honduras uh, managing uh, a cellular company the only cellular company at the time that was owned by Motorola mm -hmm. uh, and then I lost again my job and uh, given that I was losing the job too many times, I decided uh, to create my job and becoming uh, an entrepreneur. And why Honduras? Well, I just ended up there. I mean, it's uh, pure serendipity. Mm -hmm. uh, Motorola sent me there to manage the company and uh, then I lost the job uh, and I was there. Mm -hmm. So your uh, city of Morrison is uh, classified as a ZEDA, which is the Spanish acronym for the Zones for Employment and Economic Development. Michael Strong, yeah. another speaker at our Prague conference, once called uh, Honduran ZEDAs probably the most free market governing entity in the modern history. Uh, what does it mean for you? What benefits do you get from the ZEDA status? Well, the, uh... I'm doing this because I'm a libertarian and uh, I don't know if it's uh, the most advanced in modern history, but definitely it's a great, uh, uh, it's a great legislation. Uh, it's actually the only real example of uh, a private uh, economic zone that include uh, residents. Uh, usually that there's thousands of uh, special economic zones, but uh, when they are private, they're usually industrial park where people go in the morning, they work and they go back. Uh, there are some uh, special economic zones that allow for residence, uh, for example, in China or in Arab state, uh, but they are all, all owned by the state. Uh, this is, a, let's say, they allows residence and, and uh, this includes uh, things like uh, law and order and, and uh, providing uh, public services uh, like education, health care. And I think it's an incredible opportunity uh, from a libertarian point of view to show that uh, private can uh, provide what uh, Samuelson called uh, public service that are not public service, public goods. And uh, they can do it much better than, than the government without uh, all the problems of uh, public choice, the mm -hmm. public choice. And who are your residents? Where I am a resident? No, who are the residents of Morasan? Ah, well, they can be 
legal entities like companies or individuals, families. Uh, in this moment, uh, we have about uh, 35 uh, families living there and uh, some individuals also. Uh, uh, most are Honduranian. They, they work uh, in, in, the, in the factory around. Uh, they used to work also in the factory inside, let's say, but after the April uh, derogation law, uh, the, the company left. So uh, now Ciudad Morazan is mostly a residential community. So they live there, they work outside. And um, mostly Honduranian, uh, we have a few foreigners, Americans, Russian, one Russian, mm. and a few others. Mm -hmm. uh, there is obviously uh, no one size fits all business model for a private city, because that's the whole point of experimenting with governance. Uh, what is Morrison's business model? How do you plan to, how are you planning to make money? Yeah, well, the, there are two differences uh, with uh, the other uh, Z, the other two Z. The first that we are focusing uh, on uh, blue collar uh, worker uh, in Honduras. Uh, um, so we do we, we we build houses that we rent at one hundred twenty dollar per month. Uh, there are small but nice houses uh, in a very safe environment, uh, but clearly are not places where. Uh, uh, Americans uh, uh, or, or European uh, libertarian uh, would like, uh, I mean, they, they might come, of course, but it's not as attractive as uh, beautiful beaches in, in uh, Ruatan, right? And then we have a big institutional difference. We are uh, what I call uh, an entrepreneurial community, which means uh, uh, we do not sell the real estate, we only rent. There is a single uh, legal entity, a for-profit entity that is owner of the land, is the owner of the land and uh, build uh, all the houses and industrial building and office building and so on, and they rent, uh, uh, they rent to to individuals or to company the spaces, uh, and this is the revenue model. It's like a commercial mall. Um, and this has a big, in, big impact uh, with uh, governance because uh, if you take, for example, a commercial mall, uh, there is not much need uh, of a democratic process. I mean, uh, the, the relationship is managed uh, by the contract. Uh, if you go in the mall, uh, you have to pay a rent uh, and you contract a series of uh, services. Uh, first of which is, is the space you rent, but also uh, the public illumination, uh, the, the security, the cleaning services, uh, and uh, it's a contractual relationship. You're describing um, the city as a hotel model. You told me last time we spoke that you're a big fan of uh, Spencer Heath. So if you could absolutely. say a few words about this model, what, what does it, uh, how does it operate? Well, um, I don't know how deep to go, but Spencer mm -hmm. Keat was a member of uh, the old right, that uh, group of uh, thinkers uh, during the New Deal that were opposed uh, to uh, Roosevelt, uh, among which there was Mencken, uh, A.G. Nock, uh, uh, and a few other. And um, Spencer, in particular, uh, started his life as a Georgist, uh, as a single taxer, Henry George, uh, but then he realized uh, that the need to have, the, the, I mean, the state uh, uh, was not needed, uh, nor uh, there was uh, an ethical reason to have the state uh, to negotiate, to, to use uh, the rent of the land to provide the governance. So as I don't know if everybody knows, but the idea of Henry George is that uh, uh, the, the rent of the land uh, should have been uh, captured by the state uh, and uh, using these taxes, the only taxes in, in Henry George's idea uh, was, was, was the, on the value of the land uh, and uh, it was used to provide all the public services needed by society. Um, Spencer Heath agreed that uh, the land is very important, but didn't see the need to use the state. I mean, uh, the, the owner of the land can provide uh, uh, governance uh, using the rent uh, to provide uh, police, judiciary, 
and national defense uh, and whatever else uh, people want. So, for example, let's imagine uh, a situation of uh, 50,000 uh, entities that are uh, probably listed in the stock market because uh, uh, real estate is very expensive. Uh, so these entities are like cities, uh, cities of say a few hundred thousand people uh, in which uh, residents are actually clients they can choose where to go to live and uh, they choose in base of uh, things like languages of or climate uh, and things about governance what are the rule of the place uh, what is the taxes that they have to pay or the rent they have to pay and uh, how well is manage the community and so there is a competition, uh, the same competition that you can find uh, among a player to provide you with uh, shampoo. In this case, it's a competition to provide you with, uh, with governance. And uh, actually, it's an idea that has some uh, historical root uh, in the past. For example, uh, one very important is the Holy Roman Empire, uh, the, the, the empire in uh, that covered uh, most of what is now Austrian Germany during, uh, well, from uh, Carlo Magno, from Charles Magno uh, until uh, essentially Napoleon. Um, it, it was a, a huge uh, amount uh, of uh, different political entities, uh, uh, not completely sovereign. Uh, there was a concept that has been lost, uh, that is uh, the suzerainty. Uh, so there were um, units that were very political uh, separated. I mean, probably the most important example is what uh, became uh, uh, Switzerland after uh, the, 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 the Thirty Year World war in uh, 1543, I think, 1643. But uh, there were a lot of other uh, entities uh, that may have uh, uh, independence uh, in fiscal uh, uh, aspect or in judiciary aspect, uh, but they were uh, so, uh, suzerain to somebody else in military aspects. Uh, and uh, but. But what is the most important uh, point uh, is that they compete among them uh, to, to recruit a citizen, uh, to attract a client, client citizen. More clients, more citizen uh, meant uh, more revenues. So there was this competition among uh, a provider of governance that made what is now Germany the richest part of Europe uh, from, for most of uh, the Middle Ages. I wish we had more time now to speak to you about the precursors to uh, free cities, private cities, because you, you seem to uh, know the history, and I hope we will do it in uh, Prague. Uh, for now, I have a few more questions about um, Honduras and Morasan. So uh, charter cities is, as we all know, a very politicized topic in Honduras. And from the very beginning, which was around 20 so the 2012 uh was uh, the first attempt uh well 2020 20, or even earlier depends on what we uh see as a starting point the idea have faced fierce resistance from the uh left-wing movements and they called zetas uh, unconstitutional neo-colonial there were protests across the country and so Prospera, Zeta Prospera, which you mentioned, the other one that has been widely covered in the media, they had all sort of problems, including physical confrontation with the opponents. Uh, did you experience something like that in Morasan? No, uh, no physical, just uh, um, ideological, yes. Uh, Sometimes they do some uh, march. Uh, usually this march, uh, the people walking uh, down the street, but there are very few of them. Uh, there, is, there is a lot of uh, noisy people that are against the Zede, uh, but there is not a lot of people. I mean, if you look uh, in Twitter uh, or uh, in, in other uh, social network, uh, you might have the impression that there is a lot of resistance against the Zede. 
But the point is that these people are very noisy, uh, but uh, they seem to be many more than they ac actually are. Uh, if you ask uh, the normal person in Honduras, the person that has to work uh, and to find uh, a place uh, to, to, to put his family, you know, hoping that the, the family is safe, uh, they don't really care. They don't. They don't care. I mean, it's uh, if you ask most people in, in the street in Honduras, they don't even know. Uh, they don't know what the Zede is. Uh, and uh, by the way, whenever uh, they come to Ciudad Morazan, uh, even if at the beginning uh, they know it, which is not very common, but if they know it and, 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 and they are kind of uh, ideological opposed, uh, they always change their mind once they see the community. Um, because it's it's a community made uh, for them. It's not made uh, for some uh, rich uh, libertarian, uh, American libertarian, uh, you know, like Gulf culture or something like that. It's uh, it's a very Honduranian community uh, with uh, pulperia and kids uh, playing, uh, and uh, it's it's just a piece of Honduras. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a safe piece of Honduras, given that the security is provided by a private entity, they are not corrupted, uh, and uh, of course the place is walled. It's walled by law because it's a special economic zone, so by law we are forced to have a wall, but this also helps uh, with security, and nothing happened there. And Choloma is one of the worst and most dangerous places uh, in Honduras, uh, and Honduras is one of the most uh, dangerous country on earth but uh, in one and a half year uh, nothing happened uh, in the community I, I mean i cannot exclude that something will happen but it's 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 very unlikely mm -hmm. so last november uh the left-wing liberal party came to power and one of their main promises had been to end the zere program and they kind of did it in April yeah. New Congress repealed the Zeta law. What does it mean for you, for Morrison, for people living and working there? Well, first of all, it's not repealed uh, yet because uh, the Zeta law was a constitution is a constitutional law. And uh, if you want to change a constitutional law by by Honduras law, you have to repeat the uh, the vote again uh, so it was uh, yes uh, they 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 said that they started the process of of the elimination of the law but they have to repeat it uh, next year now if it's so going to happen or congress not we don't or know the next congress the same congress has to do it N not the same congress next year they say the next uh, legislature but uh, in the honduras uh, legalese uh, next legislature means the next year Mm. So they will be able to do if uh, they are so willing, uh, starting from January. Uh, so they have to vote again, and again they have uh, to to get at least 66% uh, uh, of the votes, because it's a cost constitutional vote. Mm. Um, the first time uh, they apparently receive it, uh, I, I'm saying ap apparently because they never counted the vote, it, it was... Uh, voted by acclamation is what they say. I mean that uh, they say, do we vote? Yes. And everybody get up and start to scream. And from some reason, uh, the president of the Congress says, yes, everybody said so without counting them. So I guess uh, they will try to do a, a thing like this. I, I don't know. Sometimes it's it's kind of folkloric, the politics in, uh, in Honduras. Um, but even if they vote again, uh, um, in the law says uh, that there is uh, a period uh, in which uh, the what they in, in Spanish is said that it means acquired rights, uh, derechos adquiridos, meaning that the companies that already exist under uh, a specific uh, system uh, have uh, a certain amount of time under which the rights are protected. This uh, should be by default 10 years. Mm -hmm. But because of a very complex issue that has to do with a free trade agreement with the state of Kuwait, uh, we believe uh, that we actually have uh, 50 years uh, of uh, uh, protection, in which uh, mm -hmm. it's true, no new Zed can be created, but um, 
the existing Zede can, uh, can go on for 50 years. Now, of course, uh, uh, the government uh, is the entity that uh, control the people with the guns. So they can always use violence uh, not to follow their own legislation. So they can come and, and to close us down. Mm -hmm. We cannot, uh, of course, impede that. In that case, uh, it's, uh, it's an indirect expropriation. And there are um, uh, legal protection for us, uh, mostly with the uh, CAFTA, the Central American Free Trade Agreement, uh, with arbitration in New York. Uh, but that would be a pity. I'm, I will be likely able to recoup uh, the money I invested, uh, but the project uh, would uh, will be dead. And this is a pity not only for uh, Honduras, but I believe for the entire world. Said that, uh, I think uh, the time is becoming uh, more and more mature. If it's not going to be the Zede in Honduras, uh, will be other initiatives uh, that we know are uh, going on in other countries. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the welfare uh, state, the welfare states are, are uh, more and more desperate uh, to find uh, to find the money. And, uh, and and the way they one of the way they want to do it uh, is to, to provide uh, space for investment and protract investment is uh, this type of uh, special economic zone will become more and more common. Mm -hmm. I hope to see some real freedom in my life uh, but if not I will anyway work for this in the future to make sure that that would be uh, will be available for my kids life mm. so what you described what what happened in honduras uh i that this is what i personally call the catch-22 problem of uh free private cities so you need them most in countries with very bad institutions but it is the same countries where investors risk most when they're trying to build such cities so it's both yeah. uh they both have incentive to do that and incentives not to do that so if you are building a free city so you mentioned the CAFTA agreement for example is that what are the ways to sort of shield your projects uh from situations like this when uh the part like the party comes to power that wants to overnight crash it all well, of course, uh, you can only shield uh, with uh, international arbitrate. Uh, that the most it can do is to give you back the money or, or uh, the, the lost profit, because the only way to defend a, a, a community would be with, with, with violence, you know, with the force. But of course, uh, from an ideological point of view and from a practical point of view, you cannot uh, get yourself... Uh, in, in, in a struggle with a nation state. Mm. So wherever you go, uh, at the end, uh, it will depend only on the uh, willingness uh, of the state uh, to, to respect the pact uh, in which, uh, which, which it, it, it contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, now, it's true that uh, it would be better if instead of being... Uh, in a country where the rule of law has less of a tradition uh, compared to other, uh, it could have been better. But I remember a, 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 a meeting I had at the very beginning of this process with Paul Romer. He asked me, uh, what do you think about, about this law? I was very happy. I was already living in Honduras and being a libertarian was a great uh, opportunity. And I tell, told him I, I would only, I mean, I may be, but it would be even better if it was in a place with uh, rule of law and a uh, lot of space, like uh, Australia, Canada, or Finland. And he told me a phrase which is true. I mean, I was naive. I said, uh, only desperate country do desperate uh, things. Mm -hmm. At that moment, uh, Honduras was uh, fairly uh, uh, desperate because it was... Uh, it was uh, coming out uh, of a very difficult uh, institutional uh, transitional process uh, when uh, the former president Zelaya was essentially kicked out of the country. 
and um, nobody was investing uh, in, in Honduras, uh, and they had to do some uh, something very radical to to, to attract investment, and, and this is why the 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 the, the, the this uh, legislation was born. Uh, then we know that the first uh, iteration of the legislation was struck down by, by the Supreme Court. Uh, and uh, so there were uh, some changes in the constitution and uh, in, in the law. So the, the first law was called, I think, the red law, the, the mm -hmm. red, something like that. And, and the new one is to say that they are not exactly the same, but the objective was the same, to create a, a zone with a certain degree of autonomy uh, large enough uh, to be attractive uh, to foreign uh, or local capital, and um, and this is the I mean I I think the point of uh, Paul Romer was exactly what you said. It, it's better that it happen in a country with a stronger rule of law, but in most cases uh, those country. Mm -hmm. Uh, do not need it. Uh, I, I think they need it uh, as well, but they don't need it uh, as strongly as a uh, poorer country. Mm -hmm. So next week in Prague, we will have people from uh, all parts of the world, from South Africa to Senegal to Guatemala, Serbia, Malta. Uh, in terms of ge geographics, uh, is there a specific region of the world where you think that uh, free cities, experimental governance have ch higher chances to succeed? But, no, I, it's, it's an institu institutional innovation. So it can happen uh, in many places. Uh, the value of the land uh, do not depend on geography, depend uh, on, on the environment uh, where, where, where you found it. Uh, so. Uh, even land that it's very marginal in value uh, uh, can can increase its value exponentially if adopt uh, uh, the right uh, institutions. So it can really happen uh, everywhere. No, I'm not talking about uh, topography. I'm talking, of course, about the legal environment, other and economic uh, situation. Are there any parts? So I know there is a lot of. Uh, hype in a good sense of the world about uh, some uh, charter cities in Africa, for example. Yeah. So any yeah. any any particular projects you're following with, you are following with. Well, yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, with the with the, the foundation and, and uh, the, the sister for profit company, which you belong to too, and uh, as you probably know, I. I cannot speak about that because it's still uh, uh, confidential. But there are a few places uh, where uh, the discussion are very advanced, uh, at least one uh, where the law was already approved. And uh, again, I am uh, confident that this is a long-term trend and uh, it will happen. It will happen and it will happen soon. Mm -hmm. And the first people, the first country that will uh, uh, introduce this and follow up will become incredibly rich and the people inside individual in that country will become incredibly rich because there is uh, trillions of dollars ready to be employed in uh, places that allow uh, a certain level of liberty mm -hmm. and then the next the other countries will look at it and decide why don't we implement something similar so exactly. it will be exactly. the discovery it, process yeah it's the struggle between uh, a tendency among uh, nation state to create a huge enormous cartel like what they want to do now with the 12 percent minimum taxes across mm. the world and uh, centrifugal uh, tendency of uh, competition and competition always wins uh, in natural society whereas, mm. so i'm I'm optimist because mm -hmm. of that. On this optimistic note, uh, I must thank you, uh, Massimo, for your time and let us continue this conversation uh, next and week. Prague. In Prague. It will be a pleasure. Thank you very thank much you. for this time.